Evaluating Premises and Conclusions An Overview So far, you know that arguments are made up of a conclusion and the premises offered to defend or uphold it. Some arguments are deductive, that is, if the premises are true and the form of the argument is valid, then the conclusion has to be true and the argument is sound. Other arguments are inductive. In inductive arguments, if the premises are either true or at least acceptable, remember that means that they are relevant to the issue at hand and provide sufficient justification, then the conclusion is likely to be true and we consider these inductive arguments to be strong. In questioning both types of arguments, there are a number of evaluations you can make to determine the soundness or strength of the argument. In this module, you will learn about two main ways to evaluate an argument. First, you'll hear about how to evaluate premises in and of themselves, on their own merits. Then, you'll learn how to evaluate the logical link that connects the premises to the conclusion. This module provides an overview of the key evaluation approaches you should use to assess any argument you encounter. Later modules will dig deeper into each approach and explain how you can effectively use the techniques to evaluate different types of arguments. Evaluating Premises – Truth and Acceptability Premises supply the evidence on which an argument is based, and their strength can range from the strongest premises that are straightforward facts, such as the Earth revolves around the Sun, to weaker premises, like personal opinions or value judgments, kind of like your friend saying, this music is awful. One standard for evaluating a premise is to determine whether it's true or false. We can use observed or empirical evidence, that is, things we see, touch, hear, smell, taste, and so on, to figure out whether certain kinds of premises are true. Now, it may not be easy to determine the truth of a premise. For a lot of early human history, proving that the Earth revolved around the Sun was quite difficult. But we at least know how we're supposed to go determining its truth, which means proving or disproving the premise. Sometimes, while it may be possible in theory to actually observe the truth of a premise, it may be, practically speaking, impossible to do so. For example, take the claim that all swans are white. In order to definitively prove this to be true, we would need to find every single swan on the planet to see what color it is. A daunting task, especially considering more swans are being born all the time. However, we could rely on swan experts, conducting research involving as many swans as is reasonable and investigating aspects of swan biology to tell us an expert's view on swan color. While we wouldn't prove that the premise was true, we could judge it to be more or less acceptable. In addition to hard-to-prove empirical claims, there are other premises that cannot be evaluated on whether they're true or not. Premises that relate to aesthetic, moral, or ethical claims fall in that category. Opinions and value judgments represent personal, cultural, communal, social, and religious perspectives and beliefs. These, by their very nature, cannot be proved or disproven. However, that does not mean that they cannot or should not be subjected to scrutiny and evaluation to determine whether they provide acceptable reasons for agreeing with a particular argument. Throughout your personal, academic, and professional life, you'll grapple with a number of arguments based on opinions or value judgments. You should resist the temptation to simply say, well, everyone's entitled to their own opinions and to accept all such arguments is equally plausible. There are many important issues and problems about which you'll find serious disagreements. Critical thinking is meant to arm you with the tools and resources to carefully consider those arguments, assess their relative strengths and weaknesses, and come to an informed and considered opinion of which one you believe to be true or reasonable. Relating premises and conclusions, validity, relevance, and sufficiency. It's not enough to simply evaluate individual premises to determine their truth or acceptability. Consider the following argument. The sky is blue, therefore I should wear sunglasses when I'm outside. Now, it is true that the sky is blue, but a reasonable person might wonder, what in the heck does the sky being blue have to do with wearing sunglasses? The truth of the premise does not necessarily guarantee that you're dealing with a valid argument,
Instead, consider an argument that says, the sun is bright. I should make sure to wear my sunglasses today. Now, this argument seems much stronger. And it is stronger because, one, the premise is, or can be determined to be upon visual examination, true. And two, there's a reasonable connection between brightness and the wearing of sunglasses. Remember that deductive arguments are those where the truth of the premise can lead to a valid conclusion. So, when evaluating deductive arguments, you should look for whether the form of the argument is valid. A deductive argument has valid form if it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. So to illustrate this, consider an example of an argument with an invalid form. Your friend tells you, the old business building is worn out and it's unsafe, so we should tear it down for the safety of the students. While the premises that the building is old and unsafe are true, they don't necessarily lead to the conclusion that the building has to be torn down. One obvious alternative is that repairs could be made to make the building safe. In this case, even though the premise is true, it's still possible for the conclusion to be false because it's not necessarily related to the premise. Now, think about this alternative example that has a valid form. Your friend says, the old business building is unsafe because it doesn't have a fire alarm system which makes it unsafe. So we should install a fire alarm system for the safety of the students. Here, clearly, if the premise is true, then the conclusion must also be true. For inductive arguments, two separate standards must be used to evaluate an argument's logical validity, relevance and sufficiency. Instead of the true or not standard used for deductive arguments, Inductive arguments rely more or less on acceptable premises to make them stronger or weaker. This makes the relationship between the premises and conclusions much more complicated. It's not the case that a premise you judge to be true can serve on its own to defend a conclusion. Instead, you are dealing with premises that are often opinion rather than fact, and these premises have a range in their acceptability. So, one thing you must do in evaluating an inductive argument is to first figure out if the premises are relevant to the issue at hand and the conclusion that's drawn. Imagine your professor asks the class, should I hold a review session before the midterm exam? Your classmate responds by saying, no, you shouldn't. The textbook for this class was really expensive. Now, the claim that the textbook was expensive may be a perfectly acceptable claim. But does it have anything to do with the conclusion that there should not be a review session? Consider an alternative response. No, you shouldn't. My friend's in the other section of this class, and they aren't having a review session. I don't think it would be fair if we have one. In this case, you will still want to evaluate the acceptability of the premises about fairness, but it is clear that there is a connection between the premises and the conclusion. In addition to figuring out whether the premises are relevant, you must also assess whether they are sufficient. That means you must think about whether the claims made in premises are enough to justify the conclusion. Let's go back to the second response on the midterm review question, the one where your classmate says, no, we shouldn't, my friend's in the other section, and they aren't having a review session. Let's say you determine the following things. One, it is true that the other section is not having a review. Two, fairness between sections is a reasonable and acceptable thing to be concerned about. And three, what's happening in the other section is relevant for your class. So is that it? Do you accept your classmates' argument as strong enough? Or might you instead say, well, I see your point. It is important to be fair, and I feel bad that the other class won't get to have a review. But why should we suffer too? That's not a good enough reason. Essentially, you're saying that your classmate's premises are not sufficient reasons to accept his conclusion. That is, it's not enough to justify the conclusion. Now you should have some idea of how to go about evaluating deductive and inductive arguments. You should examine the premises themselves and try to determine whether they're true or acceptable. Then, you need to consider the connection between premises and conclusions. Are the premises relevant to the issue and the conclusion reached? Are they sufficient to justify that conclusion? Knowing to ask these questions is an important step in critical thinking. In later modules, you will learn more about how to answer these questions.